Hi folks and thanks for joining me for this week's Stillwater tutorial. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and if you're new to the channel, please think about clicking that subscribe button. I would really appreciate your support. So this week I'm going to try something a little bit more traditional. It's the Connemara Black. It's often used on the Irish lochs when the duck fly or the black midge are coming out. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Sempify and it's the Nano Silk at 12 volt. As always with the Nano Silks, I like to get a little bit of super glue onto the shank of my hook. You just need a very slight touch. Sorry about the state of my super glue brush, it's seen better days but only a very light dot, touch, sorry, and then just spread it up the shank. Get a bed of thread down onto the shank of the hook and bring it up to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. And then you can remove your waist. Now, next then, we're going to add in our tail and what I'm going to be using is uh, some golden pheasant and I've already selected a couple of uh, plumes from the bottom here and I've got them ready to go in my hand now. So you can see the two plumes want to split apart, you want to try and get them so that they're marrying up like that. You can see if I just show it side on and that comes about a shank's length out the back of the fly. Now, uh, traditional Irish lock flies, are, they're great fun to tie and they can give you a lot of different techniques in fly tying and you should um, at least practice a couple of them. Uh, I don't find much use for this in my fly box for fishing, but as a fly tying exercise it, it's very useful. So I've just cut away the waist ends. Now, traditionally uh, it would be a silver quite a thick rib. What I'm going to be using today, uh, just to change it up a little, is some trout line pearl ribbon. Uh, and this is great stuff. I use it on a lot of my flies. And uh, it comes, it's like a little pipe. And before I tie it in, all I'm going to do is take my thumbnail and flatten out the end. It just makes it easier to tie in. And then I can capture that into place. Now I'm just going to make sure I've got that end pinned down. I don't want any of that golden fibres coming through the body of the fly. And I'll just tuck that behind my vise. Now next, for the body, um, it, it's obviously black. And I'm using some Trout Stalkers dubbing. This is the black claret. And I've already got a little bit out of the packet. Now, I don't know how well you can see this. It's like a... If you hold it up to the light, it, is, it does go blacky claret and it's like a pine squirrel that's been finely blended and dubbed with that little bit of colouring. That's really nice. So I'll just get that on. It dubs on so easily. Just great stuff to work with. Um, I've never known somebody so dedicated to getting their dubbing as nice as, as Andrew does. Andrew Ellis is the guy behind Trout Stalkers dubbing. Uh, I think he must spend his life skinning squirrels, but uh, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. <laughs> so I've got on a nice dubbing brush there, and I'm going to bring that up the body. It's a, fair, it's a fairly simple fly, this, and uh, I, I know when I first started tying, I, I would shy away from trying the, uh, or tying, should I say, trying and tying, <laughs> I might add, um, the, the sort of more traditional Irish loch flies because they just looked far too complicated. You know, that was something for the, the master anglers and the master fly tires to take on. But uh, now I'm a wee bit older. I, I can um, appreciate the beauty of the flies and, and the techniques used to tie them. And it's not as um, scary to give it a go. 
So I'm just going to bring my rib counter to the way that my dubbing went down. And I might get four turns out of this one. And then I'll bring it to the front and catch that into place. Two or three turns just to lock it in. A couple of turns in front and then you can come in with your scissors and just take that away. Now, I could leave that as is, but I like to have my body scruffed out on this fly. So I'll just come in with my dubbing brush very gently. Not a hard smash and, smash and grab like I usually like to do with my bugs, but very gently just tease out some of them fibres. You don't want to destroy your rib. So just be gentle. I lick my thumb and forefinger just to get any little fibres out of the way. And then tidy up the front. And that's looking fan dabby dozy. Okay, next I'm going to add in a little hackle. This is a hen hackle. Now, um, you might not recognise this one from previous videos. It's uh, one I picked up a long time ago. It was about a fiver. But what I wanted to do is use this to show you that you don't need to buy the whitings or genetic capes to be able to tie flies. You know, you can pick up really cheap capes and, and just make do. So if you're on a budget, this is uh, ideal. So as you can see, I've taken a feather. It's not a particularly good feather, but it's going to do for this type of fly. So what I'm going to do is at the tip, I'm going to use my hackle pliers just to catch that in and then I can sweep back a few of the fibres as I say not the best of feathers it's not the best of capes but it's going to do me a job I'll just take that away and leave a little tag now before I catch it I want to just put a little bit of wax onto my silk and then get two or three turns in Fold that back out the way. Now, if you have a mind to, you can come in and just remove a little bit more of the tag. Probably not required, to be honest, because once the hackle and this, the throat hackle goes in, you're, you're not going to see that little tag. So I want maybe one or two turns. I'll go for two on this occasion. And then I can bring my thread around to trap that feather into place like so then all I'm going to do is lick my thumb and forefinger in my left hand slick everything back get three or four hard turns in and then that will just snap away and it snapped away all too easily because of the poor quality of the feather but it, uh, the point is still don't be afraid to buy a cheap hen cape or cock cape and just use that for your tying. It, it does a job when you're on a budget. So next then, I'm going to tie in the throat hackle. I'm using some uh, English partridge. This has been dyed a lovely teal colour and I've already got a feather here that I've been working with. Uh, I've done a few, um, few of these now. And as you can see, it's got that mottled effect and it's dyed a lovely teal. So I'm just going to invert my vise and what I want, the throat hackle, is about the length of the, the body of the fly. So I'm just going to take off these feathers, maybe 10 to a dozen, for my throat hackle. Grab them in my right hand and dress it up to the fly. And I can see that that's near as damn it. So I'm going to come in with my left hand and just get a couple of wraps down onto the fly have a look, see how it's sitting and then once I'm happy that it's right I'm going to bring my fly back to the correct position bring my thread to the back of the head then excuse my fingers, I'm going to come in underneath and just remove my waist like so. Any little bits that have come away 
can remove that so you've got that little hint of blue in the fly and that's looking pretty good okay next I'm going to use my wing which is traditionally bronze mallard as you can see uh, I've got a big bag of it here this is from the Irish plucker and uh, always makes me smile I've got um, a feather out the bag already that I've been working away with and what I want to take is about my thumbnails worth because I've got small girl like hands that's not very much so if I show it up to the camera that's how much I'm taking strip it off the stock and then what you do with this is if you take I'll try and do it on the camera is fold it on top of each other so you've got your wing like so now I'm going to dress that up and I want the wing tip to be not very far away from the tip of my golden pheasant like so and then what I can do is with my left hand hold it into place and tie in the wing just uh, pause once you've got a couple of wraps in just make sure it's sitting how you want it to sit and then once you're content I got that first time which is uh, a rarity I might add lift up and remove your waist Now I'll just start to build my head and that's looking pretty decent okay so once I'm content with the head size I can come in with my whip finisher and just finish the fly off Now, obviously, with a traditional fly, it would have been some head cement or varnish. I'm going to cheat and use some UV resin. I've got some of the Solaris bone dry here. And I'll just give it a little touch either side of the head. like so and then I can come in with my torch and finish the fly off now as I said it's not really got a, a place in my own fly boxes but for a fly tying exercise it, it's an excellent fly to try if you want to get into the Irish loch style flies you've got the hackling of the black hen you've got the uh, throat hackle and you've got the wing and it looks a canny fly it takes a nice photograph, what I would say. And I dare say, on the big Irish locks, it's very effective. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please think about clicking the button in the corner there. I would really appreciate your support.